Hey guys, Inch from Seema Waps here, and today we are going to look at Swift extensions. If you haven't used them yet, they're quite a powerful feature in Swift, and they can greatly speed up your productivity. If you haven't used them yet, you're in for a treat. So first of all, what are Swift extensions? They essentially allow you to extend the functionality of an existing Swift class. It allows you to add custom methods and variables to these classes, which can be accessed from anywhere in your code. So some examples are you might want to extend the string to add a method to see if an email is valid. You could add a method to the integer or double variables to convert between imperial and metric units. You could create custom UI colors and so on. So Apple have some documentation here, which covers what extensions can do in more detail. So if you want to have a read of that, I'll leave a link in the description below. But let's get into coding some extensions to see how they work. So I'm going to go back to Xcode, I'm going to go File, New File, and we are going to create three extensions. So create a new Swift file. I'll just go back. So that's the Swift file here. Create a new empty Swift file. We're going to name one called int. And we'll put it in this extensions folder here. And we'll create another one called UI color. And finally, we'll create one more. And we're going to call that string. And I'll just move these up to be grouped together. So let's take a look at the first Swift extension, which is an integer. So imagine we have to do a lot of doubling numbers in our app. So two would become four, doubling three would become six, and so on. So we don't want to code this everywhere we need to double a number. It'd be handy if we could code it in one place for integers. This is where we can create an extension of int. Create a new function called double, which is going to return an integer. It's going to return self times two. So what this will do, whenever we create an integer from now on, we can call a custom double function on it we've created here to double it. And return self times two, I'll get back to in a second. I'll show you an example of it working and then you'll understand how the self times two actually works. So let's pretend we create a new variable called age, which is 21. And we want to double the age. So to do this with our extension, we do age equals age, which is an integer here. And if we do dot, we can do double now. And then we can print out the age. So let's run that and see if that works. Okay, now our app's running, we can see here it's printed out 42 to the console, which is double 21. And also if we do age.double, we can see it will autocomplete with our new method. If it doesn't do that, you may need to go to product and build to get that to work correctly. Every time you add new functionality to an extension. So I'm gonna go back to the integer class Going to split up our view, load up the view controller code on the right and go over how this actually works. So we declare a variable called age, which is 21. This age is of a data type integer automatically. And then with this extension, we've added a function to it called double. So we can call age.double. And what this does, this double returns self. And what self is, it's whatever the current integer is set to. So in this case, age is set to 21. 
So it will return 21 times 2, which is equal to 42. If we set the age to 10, this self would be 10. So it'd be 10 times 2 equals 20, and so on. So self is the current value of the integer, and then we times it by 2. So we set age to be age double, and then print age out as 42 to the console. So that's a basic extension in Swift. So let's take a look at some more advanced functionality. So we can see here to double the age, we have to go age equals age dot double. Be quite handy if we could simply do age dot double, wouldn't it? Well, we can do that by changing this double extension a bit. Instead of returning an integer, we'll get rid of that. We'll just call it function double and we'll do self equals self times two. And you'll notice as soon as you do this, it comes up with an error and it will let us know we need to mark the function as mutating. And what that mutating means is we can change the value of self. Without that, it's just a constant. You can't actually change it. Now we can do self equals self times two for our integer extension. If we go back to the right, we can't do age equals age dot double anymore. We simply use age dot double. So if we run that now, we'll see that it prints out 42 to the console again. So I'll just get rid of that console printout to show you what working. And we can see here it's printed out 42 to the console. So what we're doing here, instead of returning the double value, we're actually changing the value of the integer, which is 21 equals 21 times two, which is 42. Remember if this age was set to something else like 10, this self would contain the value of 10, whatever the integer is. So let's take a look at some other extensions we can create. Let's go to UI color and create a custom color. So in import foundation, we need to replace that with import UI kit because UI color uses a UI kit library. And let's create a new color called CMU blue. So I'll do function CMU blue. Um, just before that, we need to add extension UI color curly brackets. So that is the syntax of extending a class. Do function CMU blue. It's going to output a UI color. And in this, we'll do return UI color color literal red it will do zero out of two five five green is one seventy three out of two five five and the blue is two forty seven out of two five five alpha is one so now if we go back to our view controller we can do self dot view dot background color equals ui color curly brackets dot cmu blue curly brackets uh, that needs two e's so let's run that now and we'll see that our background color will be set to our custom UI color or cmu blue so we can see here it's been set to a blue color this is particularly handy extension in the fact that in large apps, you might have a color scheme and you might want to change that. This way you can change this color scheme in one place and declare the UI colors in one place and set it all over your app instead of manually either setting it in the storyboard each time or coding your color in each individual class. It saves a lot of time and makes your code a lot easier to maintain. You might have noticed if we do self dot view dot background color, if we do UI color dot blue, it doesn't have these curly brackets here. And the reason for that is in this UI color extensions, because it's a function to get access to that, we need to create the UI color class and then call the function. 
So we can actually get it to follow this syntax, which is a lot better because you want to follow the standard syntax. So let's do that now. So what we need to do, we simply do open class there, CMU blue is of a type UI color. And we'll get rid of the rest of this stuff, curly brackets, and return UI color and now actual color. So now if we go to view controller, we can get rid of these brackets here. And we'll comment out this blue one, run the app, and we'll see it still sets our background color to the correct color, but it's following the standard Apple Swift syntax for UI colors, which makes it a lot better for your coding standards. So remember to do that. We do open class fair, semi blue of the type UI color, and we can return a UI color. Another useful feature of a UI color extension, which I'll cover in a separate tutorial and link up below once it's done, is that you can actually create a UI color from a hex value instead of an RGB value. And this is quite handy if you're extracting a lot of colors out of Photoshop or you have some designers who hand over the colors they want you to use in the app as hex values, you can simply create a UI color from a hex value. So keep an eye out in the description below for that link. And finally, the last extension I'll show you is in the string.swift. And I'm going to paste the code here from the Simu Apps website which has um, got an article on extensions also, which covers the same content. And basically the codes here, if you want to copy it, I'll leave a link in the description below, just because it's a bit tedious to type out. But essentially this is using something called regex, which is regular expressions. And regular expressions allow you to declare these patterns, which can match strings. By using this email regex string here, it will check a given string if it matches the format of an email address and it will return either true or false if that string is an email address. So I'll just show you what working here. So we'll create let email equals andrew at cmuapps.com for our first one. The second one will be let's email to equals Bob, which is an invalid email address. And we'll do print email what dot is valid email. Print email to dot is valid email. Let's run that now. While that's running, that extension in string function was called is valid email, which will return true or false if a given email address is valid or not. So we can see the first one is true, which is andrewatsemalapps.com. That's a valid email address. The second one is false because Bob is not a valid email address. So that's another example of how extensions can be used in Swift. You can create custom functionality for any class, which can be quite handy, such as validation, creating custom UI colors, and so on. So the options are limitless. So if you have any cool ideas for extensions, put them in the comments below and see if you can create them and play around with it in Swift. You can download the source code for this app in the description below.